Joining us now, great to welcome New York Times and best-selling novelist. She's got a new one out. It's called The Secret Place, and we're joined by Tana French today from, I believe she's over in uh, Dublin, Ireland today. Are you over there today, Tana? I am, yeah. Hi, Doug. Thank you for having me on. Good to have you with us. Yeah, you're, you're the second author we've had from Ireland on, so good to, good to talk to people from the Emerald Isle. How are things over there? <laughs> good. It's not raining at that moment, and that counts as a win for us. That's good. We've had a lot of rain down here in Florida. It felt like we were in Europe, uh, or your part of the world, the last few days down <laughs> here in Florida. But, uh, <laughs> well, first of all, congratulations not only on this book, but the uh, the series of books that have done so well. You have four, uh, four best-selling crime novels, so that, that's a great run for you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty blown away and happy. Talk a little bit about this one. This is called The Secret Place. Now, when I talk to novelists, I don't like to give away too much, uh, but uh, I know it, it, it deals with, uh, obviously, a crime, but The Secret Place is, uh, is kind of a billboard, right, where people put up notes of things they wanted to keep secret, and, and a crime takes place. Is that, is, that, is that accurate? Yep. It's a men's board in a very kind of elite private girls boarding school, and it's where they can put up anything. They can reveal any secrets that they want to reveal anonymously. Like if you, you know, you hate your parents or you're madly in love with somebody, you can put up a postcard revealing it while still keeping your secret. And one day, Holly Mackey, 16-year-old girl at the school, finds a postcard that has on it a photo of a guy from the neighboring boys' school who was found dead on the school grounds a year ago, murdered. It's still unsolved. And the caption says, I know who did it. And she brings it into Stephen Moran, the narrator, and gives him the postcard, and he has to work out what to do with it, how to follow it up. That's a great, uh, great setup there. Now, does that actually exist? Uh, those kind of billboards? Uh, have you seen those? Or? Well, I haven't seen a real life one, but the idea from the book came from a website called Post Secrets that somebody sent oh, me sure. a link to, and it's an incredible website. I, yeah, I, you know, I interviewed the author of that. that. I interviewed the author of that book. Yeah, it's fascinating. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh well, well I owe him a big, big thank you because I owe him this book because that's <laughs> exactly what happens. People send in secrets that they want to reveal, but anonymously, and he puts them up there. And the secrets, they're incredible. They they are, they're moving, they're beautiful, they're funny, they're raw, they're painful, they're absolutely everything. And it got me thinking about the fact that you know, people really, we want to reveal our secrets. We want the people we're closest to to know everything about us. And yet there's also this pull to keep our secrets, to keep ourselves inviolate, to keep some bit of ourselves private. And I thought that website manages to bring those two needs together, to, let, to fulfill both of those needs at once. And then I thought, well, what if the teenagers are when that need is most intense? So what if they had access? to a concrete, a uh, real life board like that. And then, you know, I'm a crime writer. I'm always looking for where I can dump in a dead body. I thought, what if one of the teenagers <laughs> used a board like that to reveal what she knows about a murder? Well, I think we're seeing uh, you know, the manifestation of that, uh, people uh, wanting to reveal things about themselves in the last uh, five, ten years with uh, with the Internet, right? With Facebook and all those sites, people want to, want to tell stuff and uh, about themselves. So this kind of fits in with that, doesn't it, that, 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 that mindset? Yeah, very much so. I think, in a way, to be honest, the mindset that I'm talking about where there's this two-way pull, I think that may be slowly being eroded because people more and more seem to be perfectly happy revealing every secret they've ever had to the Internet. Not everybody, obviously, but a lot more people seem to be comfortable with that idea. They don't seem to have that urge to keep stuff private. I mean, I remember keeping a diary when I was a teenager. If anyone had ever read it, I would have been outraged. <laughs> and now people don't mind. They keep a blog. You know, <laughs> they, don't, they don't mind anyone reading it. It's <laughs> well, talk a little bit about the characters in the book. You know, you've written... Uh... Uh, several of these before. Did the, uh, do you find it more challenging to come up with different plot lines, or how do you go about that? I'm kind of lucky because usually when I'm about two thirds of the way through a book, my mind starts wanting to do absolutely anything else other than what I'm supposed <laughs> to be doing. So it's like, oh, yeah, I should really clear out all the closets. That'd be great. Or, yeah, I wonder what would happen if I put pink dye and a stripe down the cat. That'd be interesting. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> anything other than what I'm supposed to be doing. But the good side is that I usually come up with an idea for a different book. I start going, oh, instead of writing about this character, wouldn't it be cool to be writing about this character? I wonder what that character would do. With so at least I come out of it with an idea for another book. So, yeah, <laughs> This one, I, I had this one already, and I finished the one before. Well, it's good to hear that a, a professional writer like yourself also deals with the, the procrastination thing. I, I, I have that as well, but not on that yeah. level, you know, writing for, <laughs> for broadcasting and other things. So every writer deals with that, I guess, right? <laughs> I think so, yeah. It's a solitary thing, so there's nobody there to keep you on track. Like, if you suddenly get a huge attack of a goof off instincts, you're the only person there to keep yourself actually <laughs> focused on what you're doing. Yeah. How do, how do you plan out your book? Do you write out a uh, you know, five, six-page outline, or do you go with the plot, or how do you go about it? 
No, I just I saw by the seat of my pants. I know writers who have the whole thing outlined. I'm I'm in all that, and I'm kind of jealous because at least they know there is a book there. Like before they start writing, they know there's going to be an ending. There's a plot arc. But I, I don't work that way. I just I jump in. I've got uh, a main character, a narrator, um, a very basic premise, and a core location, like the, the basic setting. And I just jump in, and I hope there's a book there at the end of it. And it makes for a lot of rewriting because you get to chapter six and discover something that you haven't seen coming and go, no, oh, I have to rewrite the whole of chapter two. <laughs> but, you know, it's the only way I know how to work. And when you're doing crime, uh novels, uh, you, you're dealing with the police procedure and, and, and that kind of thing. There's a, you, you want to keep that, I guess, somewhat accurate, right? Do you do research on, uh, on yes. the crime investigative techniques? Oh, I'm lucky on that one. I know a retired detective who has answered the number of questions he's answered for me over the years. And it's not just answering questions. It's not just like, what are the exact words of precaution? And he also, he'll tell me stories from his experience with, you know, with the identifying details filed off kind of thing. But he'll tell me stories and that's where you get the stuff that you didn't even know you needed to know, like what the atmosphere is like on mm -hmm. a big case, what the, the politicking is like within the department. These little things are what, what you really need to know, but you don't even know how to ask about. And I've got the occasional letter from actual real-life detectives saying, yes, you got that right. And that means so much to me, because these people are out there, they're dealing with the real stuff. They're dealing with life and death and truth and justice on a daily basis. You know, if they, if I have a bad day at work, there are too many adjectives in the world. If they have a bad day at work, <laughs> somebody could die. And <laughs> huge respect. So if they say I'm getting it right, that completely makes my day. And, and, and that genre now, we see it here uh, in the States, uh, you know, with also those, so many of those CSI or NCIS crime shows. People people really like reading these types of stories. So I, I guess it kind of keeps you on your toes to, to find new ways to tell them, but, but uh, it's it's an interesting genre to write for. People people really like these kind of uh, kind of books. People love mysteries. I think it's one of the fundamental things about being human is we love mysteries. We love not just the solutions, or else everybody would just read the first chapter of a mystery book and then skip to the end, you know? We <laughs> love the process of finding the solutions. And, um, like, I love it. I've been fascinated by mysteries since I was a little kid. You know, real ones, fictional ones, solved, unsolved, I don't care. And and I think it is. It's one of the core things about being not just a mystery reader, but a mystery writer as well. You're always looking for the potential mystery in everything. Well, the name of the book is called The Secret Place. It's uh, part of the uh, Dublin Murder Squad series. I should have mentioned that before. I've been talking with uh, Tana French today. And uh, Tana, give out your website. People can uh, contact you if they like. And they obviously get hold of the book as well. Yep, it's tanafrench.com. And there's also a Facebook page, Tana French. And the book hopefully is in bookshops everywhere. Great. I know you're doing some. Uh, Skype events around uh, throughout the states uh, coming up. I see on your schedule, so uh, hopefully we can get a chance to talk to you when the next book comes out. But thanks for joining us today. Thanks very much for having me. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, please go to dogmilesmedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at dogmilesmedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media. All rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or Doug Miles Media.